What's up, everybody? It's me, Greg, alongside my Canadian Maple Leaf, Mitchell Dyer. Hello, Greg. Mitch, we got an email here, and I thought you would be good to answer it with me. Okay. This comes from Nate, not yes. Nate Ahern. No. Nate says, I was wondering what you guys thought about the recent trend of darker video game stories. Some examples would be The, La the Walking Dead, The Last of Us, Bioshock, Tomb Raider, Far Cry 3, just to name a few. Yep. Without getting into spoilers, these games are very dark, and all of them have even darker endings. Is this shift to more serious stories because video games are maturing as an art form, or is it because people are drawn to more serious stories now? Thanks, Nate. Thank you, Nate. What do you think? I think that mature video games, especially in terms of like vi mature video game storytelling, isn't exactly new. Mm. Like All of the old Final Fantasy games took themselves very seriously, and they had a lot of really dark themes. I think now, as games get more complex and more visually impressive, we're just starting to notice it more because we're seeing you know, disgusting blood spatter and... We have character performances that are not just written by talk or written and shown in talking head form. We have like Joel in The Last of Us with like just brooding facial expressions that we can read into and stuff like that. Right. I just think time has enabled us to be more aware of the maturity that was always there. Sure. I think there. I definitely think there's more mature games now. It's, yeah. And I think I in think terms of like more quality or quantity, rather. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. I was trying. I started going down that rabbit hole. How am I going to say this? I, I got you back, buddy. So you I'm here me. for you. And I think. He's talking about, you know, are people drawn to more serious games or are there more mercy? And I think it's, sure. I think that's an interwoven thing, right? For yeah. me, what is happening right now is that we're lucky enough, or maybe me because I'm older than you, is that as I've grown up, I feel like video games have matured with me. Both in terms sure. of graphical fidelity and in terms of storytelling, yeah. right? Because when I did, I always tell a story that in high school, you know, I had a conversation with a friend where I was like, I think I'm falling out of games. Like, I was playing a lot of N64 stuff and it wasn't with me anymore. I was like, I like Mario fine, but I don't want to keep yeah. playing a Mario game. And then I found Metal Gear Solid and I was like, this is what I want. Yeah. I want this caliber of story. I want to feel something when I play games. And now you see that all the time with stuff like Last of Us, like Bioshock, like Tomb Raider, right? These performances where we do connect with them and we are like, yeah. oh my god, like what's going to happen to Lara? I need to know. And that's a result of the creators growing up as well, right? Because yep. people making these games, they... You know, maybe they were in their early 20s or whatever, like you and I now. I don't know how old you are. Maybe you're 30 now. I'm 30 now. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. Uh, so I think, you know, guys making games that were like my age were seeing stuff change and they were seeing like, wow, this is really interesting. And sure. Like as an adult, I'm more interested in these themes and this kind of presentation and applying that into, their into games they made in the future. Well, it's somebody hit the nail on the head the other day, I thought, right? Then they were talking about the fact that, oh man, The Walking Dead, Last of Us, and Bioshock are all this male protagonist taking care of this female, to yep. getting her somewhere. From Similar thing in Far Cry 3, where you're rescuing your, the, the girls that came with you, and the right, guys too, right. but it was the same deal. And for those specific things, somebody said, yeah, you can tell that the developers have daughters now. That they have a child now, there right? Was, yeah, that, that theme as well. The theme last year was, was all of that. Dishonored had the same thing. Right. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, right? And on his podcast, he talks about the fact that, you know, that Clerks 1 was all about just working at a store, right? Yeah. And Clerks 2 was about finding love and how do you deal with that. And Clerks 3, from what he talks about, it sounds like it's going to be about being a father, you know, having all these different yeah. things. What he did, what he tried with Jersey Girl, right? Like, I mean, like, yeah, the, well, his, well. these stories are reflections of his life. Yeah. And I think games in the same way. Yeah, and I, li I like that. I like seeing how creators change over time and how they apply that to their games. And just, it's cool to be part of that and to, be, like, be there with them and just, A, watch how they change and, B, see how that see how I put my personal effects on that, just to see well, what is my experience in my life and how do I feel about what they're doing. Because I, I think a lot of people reacted to Bioshock in a lot of different interesting ways, depending on how they felt about like, having a family or wanting a family or being aware of literature, like just being, some, being someone that games aren't taking for granted. Because mm. you know, a lot of games are very overt about their storytelling, and that's what I think is the difference between maturity in Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 2 is that Far Cry 3 is very overt about saying, look, this is gross and bad, and isn't this disturbing? And it's like, yeah, yeah, it is. But it Far, is, Cry, yeah. Far Cry 2 did that in a lot more subtle ways. And I think both, are, both have their place, and gamers have, have different wants and needs depending on what their experiences are. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Are you getting older? Are games getting older? Are they all together? We're all Let getting older. in the comments. We're all getting older, sadly, and I think that's the point. And that's why it's great to be... Yeah. If you want, like, simple games, there's always going to be a younger developer making the simpler games. And you get older, you got all these old people, like Neil Druckmann with his cane, giving you all these... I wonder, actually, stories. you know what? Before you close, I want to yeah. wonder, like, when... T 20 years from now, when someone like Neil Druckmann, who's been telling these dark stories and wants to have these dark experiences and these mature stories, I wonder if, as he gets older and starts to just, you know, become a more mature guy when he's in his 50s and 60s, is that the kind of stuff he's going to want to make? Mm -hmm. And will, as you and I get older, is that the kind of experiences we're going to want to have? Are we right. going to want to play something like The Last of Us in 20 years, something really dark and brutal, or are we just going to be, you know, that's not what I want anymore. I'm an old man. I just want something to relax with, something pleasant. 
Yeah, that's when Genova Chen comes in. Yes. With this giant hammer of flower and journey. There's, there's, there's a place for all of this. And and that's, like what, that's what's great about gaming right yeah. now. No matter what mood you were in, there is a game There's for something mood. for you. And it's going to keep getting that way unless it all collapses upon itself and Mitch and I are out of a job. To find out if Mitch and I have a job tomorrow, keep it on IGN.